In the area of direct air capture, we, we're, we're looking for materials that can capture CO2 selectively from the air and leave the water behind. The air that you're moving through will probably look different if you're in Texas or if you're in Florida or if you're in Alaska. And so when we think about those processes, the, the missing piece is the material. So we really need to find the perfect material that can go in and adapt to those conditions. Meta had this idea about using data centers as a potential route to direct air capture. However, they recognized that they need new materials to do that. And so our team was able to use a combination of chemistry and materials knowledge, along with knowledge of relevant conditions for direct air capture, the relevant chemistry for direct air capture, to create inputs that Meta's team could use to generate the database. The way that this database might be used is for engineers who are trying to design direct air capture or other kinds of carbon capture processes. And so they might use this database either just searching through the database or they might use the AI models. And I think that's where it gets really exciting because now they're not confined to the specific materials or structures that we have in the database. So today, if we look at the scale of direct air capture of carbon dioxide, the scale is a few thousand tons. And we know that we're going to need scales that are in the millions of tons to potentially even thousands of millions of tons. Given that scale, we have to be developing those technologies over the next decade to a decade and a half. And those technologies can't be developed without the materials to support them. So we have to be discovering those materials today. Direct air capture is a technology that's very new, but I think that I would encourage folks to think about their children and their grandchildren and recognize that at some point in the future, the carbon levels in the atmosphere will very likely have catastrophic consequences. And we need to work on both basic science, applied science, fundamental science in order to enable these technologies to solve those problems down the line.